<laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that was a bad thing. I'm actually in Central Park, New York right now. So I came back from my internship in Bellevue, Washington last week. Talking about the summer itself, it was one, probably one of the best summers ever. And uh, I had a very holistic development over the summer by not just working on my project at office, but also doing a lot of my personal hobbies on the side. So on the whole, it was a great experience. In this video, I wanted to talk about three things. First, I will be making a video soon on how to go about the entire admission process for graduate school and probably one on how to interview for your job or internship as well. Second, as the semester is going to start soon, um, the schedule is going to become very hectic and uh, it's going to be pretty busy all over again. So I might not be able to make a video every single week because I don't want to compromise on quality. So. I'll definitely try to make as many as I can and if you have any suggestion on what topics to talk about definitely put that below and I'll take it into account. And third and finally in this video I want to talk about something a little different. How to ask questions effectively. This is something that I've been observing over the last one or two years and especially after I put out a few videos on YouTube uh, after the GRE and TOEFL video a lot of people have been having questions on the exams, uh, the MS process and just general career advice. I found a lot of people asking me questions related to these topics. However, most of these questions were either too broad or required a very factual answer or they were just not in my area of expertise. So people would come and ask me questions like, how do I go about studying for GRE? Or um, what's the fee for applying for GRE or TOEFL exam? or is what is the best university for construction management in the US. So you get what I mean, right? Even though I wanted to help, I couldn't do it effectively, I felt. So I want to talk about that in the video. This is something that I see a lot nowadays. We, we've been fed information for the last 16 years of school and so we become dependent on people when we have a question. You know, whenever, and this applies for me as well, whenever I had a question before, the first thing I'll do is, you know, just take my phone and ask the first person I know who might be able to help me. That's completely fine. But what I also observed right now is when you enter the corporate environment, you are more than welcome to ask questions initially, be curious, be inquisitive and get to know more about the company, the project and the team. However, after a point, there is a threshold that you hit after which you have to start doing research on your own and you have to figure out some of the answers using your own independent thought process. I found a major shift when you go from the academic environment to the corporate world and I feel you will also feel the same. So I don't want you to feel completely taken aback when you go from one environment to the other. So it's better to start changing from now itself. So next time when you have a question, just do these three things. First, think about whether the question that you're going to ask is specific enough and not too broad or generic. because. It is extremely hard to answer a question which goes like, how do I prepare for masters? You know, there's just so much involved in answering that question. Secondly, see if you can find the answer on your own. There are so many websites out there. Um, even a simple search on Google or Yahoo or Bing can give you the answer sometimes. But it's also important to know where to find what answers. And um, I've written an article on the same topic and I'm putting the link below. I put a bunch of links there where you can find answers to certain questions from different areas. So check it out. Third, if it's something that you really feel cannot be found online and you have to ask someone and you feel they can give a better answer, think about whether that person has an area of expertise and experience in whatever you're going to ask. If your question for satisfies all these criteria, then go ahead and ask. And I'm sure the person that you're asking to will give you a good enough answer. But if it doesn't satisfy, it's it's more likely that they're going to tell you either I cannot help you or they're going to give you an answer which is not so useful for you. I've been on both sides. I've been on the side asking this question and getting such an answer as well as giving such an answer to people who ask me such a question 
it's it's sad because I do want to help people who ask questions to me, but sometimes I really cannot. If you have any questions right now on what I just said, just comment them below. If you have any suggestions of new topics to talk about, comment them below. One thing that's important to know is everyone has so much going on in their life. You have your work, you have your academics, you have your personal projects and hobbies and so many things going on. So you have to be very respectful of someone else's time. And when you're respectful of their time, they will reciprocate the same. And you can spend your time doing things that you want to do. So I'm, I'm more than happy to answer your questions, but I just want you to ask them in an effective manner. So I can also give you a good answer. So you have to help me in helping you in this process. That's all I wanted to say in this video. In my next video, I'll probably be in India because I'm going there next week. So you're going to be seeing me talk back from home. If you're someone who loves to read interesting articles, learn something new every single day, check out my Instagram and Facebook profile. I share interesting articles on very different topics on my stories there and, uh, and I also share some posts. There's also my blog where I write, where I write about my experiences and the link is down below. I hope this was useful for you and I'll see you guys very soon.